Thank you. Did rebuild the wall. You got to rebuild the wall so the people can have protection when they get ready to rebuild the temple. Okay. Ezra 1 and 1, 1 through 8. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord came to the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put all this in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kings of the earth and had made me charge to build him a house of Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with them and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God. It's a pagan king, okay, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remains in any place where he sojourned, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and goods and beasts, beside the freewill offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, those two southern tribes, and the priests and Levite, and all those whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands and the vessels of silver and gold and goods and beasts with precious things, besides all that was willing to offer. Also Cyrus, the king of king, brought forth the vessels out of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Meredith, the treasure, and number them unto Shezbazer, the prince of Judah. Now go down to Ezra, go to chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 6 to 13. Ezra, chapter 3, verse 6 to 13. I know I'm giving you all a lot of information, but this is historical. This is important. This is important so that we can see, you know, the path, the path of how the devil began deceiving God's people, okay, and what all things transpired, you know, talking about before Jesus came, you know, with his people, you know, and how he caused confusion, how he caused things to be destroyed and people to be killed, and how God had to go back and, 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 and correct things. And we need to know, have this information. Ezra chapter 3, verse 6. The, from the first day of the seventh month began they to burn, burn offering unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord has not been laid yet. They gave money also to the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them at Zidon and to them at Tyre. To bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the Sea of Joppa according to the grant that they had uh, had Cyrus, king of Persia, had gave them, had wrote them a grant to tell those people to give them everything they need in order to build that temple. Now in the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem in the sixth month, began Zerubbabel, the son of Seattle, and Joshua, the son of Zedadak, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all that were come out of the captivity of Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites, and 20 years old and upward, to set for the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Joshua and his sons and his brethren, Kadmiel and the sons and the sons of Judah together to set forth the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Hanadad and the sons uh, and their brother the Levite. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel and trumpets and the Levites and the sons of Asa and the symbols to praise the Lord after the ordinance of King uh, David, king of Israel. And they sung together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and the chiefs of father who were ancient men, okay, ancient men. So, you know, they got to be 900 years old that had seen the first house. You know, they, they've been in captivity 70 years. So, you know, these ancient men that saw the first house. When the foundation in the Bible of the house was laid before their eyes, they wept with a loud voice. Many shouted aloud with joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a shout, loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. And the noise was heard afar off. So now God has taken us full circle, destroyed the temple of the city. Now he brought his people back after the seven years, built the temple, rebuilt the wall, and, his, and established his people back in Jerusalem again. Established the people back in Jerusalem again. Now, tonight, we're going to conclude with this. We're going to conclude with this. Because what God is trying to take us, God is trying to take us from worshiping him on earth to worshiping him in heaven. Okay? That's what he's trying to take us. But before we can worship God in heaven, okay, literally, okay, he got to clean us up. He got to clean us up. He got to clean this church up. Okay? He got to wash her over again. Because the same thing has happened in his church today that happened, you know, these thousands of years ago. The devil has come into the New Testament church and did the same thing he did in the Old Testament church, okay? 
He's got inside of men and women, you know, in the church and inside these men and women in the church, the devil has used these vessels okay, of dishonor to deceive God's people. And as a result of that, a lot of God's people from the pulpit to the back door have led God's people into the worshiping of other idols, into the worshiping of other, other God, into setting up altars, okay, for other God, into bear, bowing down to other God, into making oath to other God, into taking vows to other God, into swearing to other God. And because these things has happened, God had to take us all the way back to show us, okay? To show us ain't nothing new under the sun. What's going on in his New Testament church was the same thing that was going on in the Old Testament church. And this is what God has been, been revealing to us for these last few weeks, okay? Preferably so those that's listening now, they can understand, hopefully and preferably, especially the leaders of God's people, those pastors or whatnot that over the church that have been deceived because it's a deception because, you know, just like the Bible say, you know, they worship in God, you know, they're not only worship in God, they worship in God and they worship in other gods too. And they don't think there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. And so God had to take us all the way back to bring us to where we need to be. Okay. So that he can deal with our hearts so that he can get all that idolatry out of our hearts so that we can get it out of our churches, okay? Because God wants to visit us. God has to visit us because if he don't, when the devil come, and you know, you know, the Bible says the gates of hell are not gonna prevail again. So we know he got to visit us again and he's got to restore power back to his church, okay? He's got to send a fresh anointing, okay? One more time in the church and to give the church power, okay? So that, he can work in and through us to bring in that latter day harvest. Those last soul that's out there, okay, that don't know God. He's talking about basically our children and our grandchildren, this generation that know not God, okay, because their mothers and their grandmothers and their great grandmother left the church years ago. And so God realized and understand it's not these children's fault that they're thugging, that they're 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 selling drugs, that they're are killing each other, okay? Because they're empty, they're void of God's word. They don't have anything, they, no, they don't have no light in them, okay? But God loves them. And the, the reason why that happened is because of what the devil has done in the church, okay? You know, over these last 2,000 years and, and, and deceived the leaders of the church until right now, you know, they, and, and they, they're taking our children right now, just like in, in ancient times, they was taking their children through the fire, we're taking our children through the fire. I mean, when he say taking them through the fire, what he mean is that we're sacrificing our children so that we can entertain these other gods, these devils, sacrificing our children so we can entertain these devils. And the way the devil has done it to the New Testament church is this. He has deceived so many leaders of our denomination, so many pastors and deacons in our churches that worship these false gods and set up these other altars and worship in other places other than God's church, you know, his house that's been dedicated to him. They've been so caught up doing those things and the way they're taking our children through the fire and sacrificing them is that they forgot all about our children. They didn't take our eyes and our mind off of the most precious thing in the earth that should be to us our children. And now we see them selling drugs. We see them dropping out of school. We see them literally killing each other. It's like the wild, wild west. And instead of the churches, you know, falling on their face, weeping, calling the fast and all the, the, the leaders of the denomination, especially African-Americans, it, it, basically in America, it's our children. It's our children that's doing it. Okay. It's our children. But instead of the churches and the pastors and our denomination leaders calling for a prayer and a fast for us to turn back to God, for God to empower the church again so that we can uh, go get our children, bind up the works of the devil and our children. Uh, he got them so focused on, you know, deceive until our children ain't even on their mind and ain't even on their thought. When every time they turn the news, they see our children killing each other. Every time they hear something from the Department of Correction, all they see and hear are our children out there. And they talk to the correction officer, they know nothing about our children. But the devil has deceived the leader so much, worshiping those false gods and setting up those altars and making those vows, okay, to our children ain't even on their mind. So they're sacrificing our children and taking our children through the fire. The last verse, last two verses in closing, last two verses in closing. Now, this is what the Lord wants to do. 
through all these weeks, God had been taking us, okay? He brought us all the way full circle. He showed us how the devil did it, how he deceived God's people, and God had destroyed his people. But as we look at it, God restored his people. He restored them, okay? And it's time for God to restore his church, okay? Restore his church. But in order for him to do it, he's got to purge it. So I pray that all those leaders, you know, that's out there, that have been leading God's people astray through ignorance, okay? Uh, I know God's grace is still there because they're still alive and that they turn back to God with their whole heart and that they come back to that one place of worship God has in the earth right now. That's his church. No other place. No other place. No other place. The one place of worship he established and we're going to conclude in the New Testament to prove that his church, the church house that he's established all over the world, is the one place of worship now God uh, has for his church. The last two verses in closing and then we're going to pick up next week. Ezekiel 11 and 14. Ezekiel 11 and 14. And Jeremiah 3 and 15, Ezekiel 11 and 14, 14 through 16, and Jeremiah 3, 15 through 16. Ezekiel 11, 14 through 16, and Jeremiah 3, 15 and 16. The last two verses in closing. Ezekiel 11 and 14, prophecy of houses to worship God in different places in the earth and the doing away with the Ark of the Covenant, which represent the presence of God in the tabernacle in the temple. Even before the temple that Solomon built was destroyed in 7 AD by the Romans, God had already prophesied there was going to come a time when the people would not have to go uh, to Samaria and Shiloh to that tabernacle to worship God where that Ark of the Covenant was, and God had already prophesied that there was going to be a time to come in which they're not going to even have to go to Jerusalem to worship God anymore. That's not going to be the one place. But this prophetic word was that God was going to plant churches all over the world, churches like we worship in the day. And these churches are the one place, the only place that he wanted his people to come in and worship. Ezekiel 11 and 14 says this. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, thy brother, even thy brother, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get ye far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. Therefore, because of these things, therefore, thus said the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, you know, we scattered all into the four winds of the earth, and although I have scattered them among the countries, that means all over the world, the own world. Listen to what he say. Listen to what he say now. He can scatter his people all over the world like the dew on the grass in the morning. That's what the prophets say. Like the dew on the grass in the morning. He scattered them all over the world. But it was, it was prophetic. The devil thought he was destroying the church. He was suffering the church. But really, he was helping the church through God scattering them. Although I've scattered them among the countries, all over the world, yet, listen to what he say now, yet, Will I be to them as a what? Little sanctuary. Whatever country, wherever city, wherever town, he scattered his people all over the world. All he got to do is set up a little sanctuary. Today we call them churches. A little sanctuary in the country where they shall come. So wherever God's people are, if they build a little sanctuary, we call them churches today. God said he's going to meet his people in these little sanctuary of these little churches all over the world. That's what he's prophesying through Ezekiel 11, 14 through 16. Last verse in closing. Last verse in closing. Jeremiah 3, 15 through 16. Jeremiah 3, 15 and 16. Prophecy of the time that will come when God's people will no, not have to go to the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was to enter into the presence of the Lord. Remember in the, in the temple and in the, in the tent, that Ark was there and God will come visit them, you know, where the presence of the ark will. But God had already prophesied that the time is going to come where they will not have to do that no more. He won't just visit them, you know, where the ark is. Listen to this. The last verse in closing. Jeremiah 3, 15. And I will give you pastors. Pastors now, according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what God is doing on Friday night with our prayer. Okay. We're doing this over here. And it shall come to pass now. When you should be multiplied and increased in the land, are spread all over the world, okay? You know, God got us spread all over the world. You know, all of us can go to Jerusalem to no temple no more, okay? Okay? You know, that's impossible. That's why God said, wherever you get, pitch a tent. 
a tabernacle. He said, in those days, said the Lord, they shall no more, they shall say no more now. Listen to this now. The ark of the covenant of the Lord. Now remember the ark of the covenant? That ark God had Moses built in the desert. That ark that, that, that represents his presence, that he would come down. Okay, to visit his people in the, in the, in the, in the tent. And the ark, when he brought to the temple, his present, that ark represents his present, okay? They would come down to the temple and visit his people that one place to worship. But God is saying now, he's letting us know ahead of time, uh, uh, there will come a time that his people ain't got to go to no ark, okay? For God's present, to worship him and be in his present. Neither should it come to mind. We ain't even think. You, we don't think about no ark of the covenant no more, okay? Neither should they be remember it, okay? Neither should they visit it. Neither shall that be done anymore. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So God had already prophesied through Jeremiah and through Ezekiel because he knew the time was going to come that he's going to scatter his people all over the world, that he won't keep his promise to Abraham to save people out of every race, nation, culture, and creed. God had already knew that people were going to multiply over the earth and there was no way that all of them all over the world that give their life to his son Jesus Christ were going to be able to come to Jerusalem every Sabbath and every holy day uh, to that one place of worship. So God had already decided, you know, through these prophets that he was going to begin to set up little, his, he's going to let his people set up little sanctuaries, which we call churches all over the world. OK, and that in that little sanctuary, he's going to visit them. They don't need to create an ark, don't need to build no ark. OK, he's going to visit them in that little sanctuary. He's going to visit them in that little sanctuary. Today we call the church. And next week we're going to confirm, we're going to confirm uh, the fulfillment of that scripture. Jeremiah and Ezekiel, that God established his churches in the earth, and those are the one places of worship in the earth God will meet his people at. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you, and God keep you. It's my prayer. Uh, I pray if it's the Lord's will. I see you next Friday at 6 p.m. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord.